The readings of this day tell us three barriers to the Christian living. Three main barriers that we face and we think about and maybe we don't discuss, but three main barriers to our Christian living and commitment to God. Number one in the Vespers Gospel, uh, it is the hard sayings of the Bible that are against the common wisdom of this world. We always have this tension and this struggle between God's wisdom and His ways and then our ways and the world's ways. In John 6, when Christ talked about the bread of life, that this bread will come down from, from heaven. Not as your fathers ate the manna and are dead. He who eats this bread will live forever. Therefore, many of, of his disciples, when they heard this, said, this is hard saying. Who can understand it? And from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. His own disciples, they walked back on him and they didn't follow him anymore because his sayings were hard. And this, is the, and this is our first barrier. And maybe we are here in the church and we are, and we are called Christians, but almost all of us struggle with the hard sayings of God's wisdom. And so the solution, we just don't follow them. We, we, we are in this place, but we are not followers of Christ because in our own head, his wisdom, so far away from our own wisdom. This is the first barrier. The second barrier in the Matthew's Gospel in, in, uh, this morning, it's about challenging the status quo. Christ's teachings challenges our established ways of the of the world. In John 8, the, then the Jews said to him, now we, are, we know that you have a demon. Abraham is dead and the prophets, and you say, if anyone keeps my word, he shall never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham, who is dead, and the prophets are dead? Who do you make yourself out to be? Because he, he just challenged their teaching, challenged their established ways. And then they took up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. They even tried to stone him because he just wanted them to think differently. So number two barrier is challenging the status quo, challenging our established way, challenging the ways we do things, the way we know the world. We know how people are and what people should say or who God is. If someone comes and speaks from the Bible, but different voice, different school of thought, we say, no, this is wrong, without really sitting down, without really focusing and trying to discern what is this voice. And we stone God. We stone his teachings. Maybe we don't carry physical stones, but we stone him by our own uh, rejection, our own refusal to his wisdom in our life. Number three in the Gospel of the Liturgy, it's about seeking approval and love from the world more than our eternal salvation. In John 12, and we just heard it, Nevertheless, even among the rulers, many believed in him. But because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. For they loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. Many of the people from the Pharisees, they believed in him. But they feared the rejection of people. So they believed internally, but they didn't confess him. And this is, it, it is a very dangerous barrier, is that we can't only just have faith in God. We need to confess our faith. And we don't. Because, again, 
They love the praise of men more than the praise of God. Three main barriers, and for the lack of time, uh, I will stop here, but I will just want you to think about those barriers in your life. Number one, again, um, hard sayings of the Bible, many of the Bible teachings, we claim that we, we, we don't understand, so, so, so the solution is to just put the Bible aside and living our, our own wisdom. And this is the darkness, this is the theme of this day, light versus darkness. So light wants to come into our world, but we bring darkness. We say no. God's, God's teachings are so old, are not compatible with our time. It doesn't make sense. I can't understand. And I don't let myself to sit with the word, pray to, to understand the word, and pray for wisdom, and pray for the guidance of the Holy Spirit, and seeking guidance. But I just read or hear a message and say no. This is hard. It doesn't make sense according to my own wisdom, according to my ways of living, so I just put it aside. Number two is challenging the status quo or thinking out of the box or a message that is really challenging my ways of understanding this world, dealing with people. God tells me to love, God tells me to accept, God tells me to forgive, God tells me to reconcile, God tells me to, to be patient. But it is not the way <clears throat> I am comfortable in dealing with people, so I just also put it aside and do it my own way. Number three is seeking approval and the praise of people more than my eternal salvation. It, it, it matters to me more to be accepted from a group of people, maybe by following the crowd, maybe by doing it their way, saying what they say, doing what they do, more, much more than God's acceptance and God's appro approval. I will just end by <clears throat> Mark chapter 12 when one of the people came to Jesus and, and asked him, which is the first commandment of all? Jesus answered, the first of all, the, the commandment is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. There is only one Lord. It's not you or him, because my life is, is about this battle, me versus God. Who is the boss? So the first commandment that he is the boss, he is our Lord. You shall, love the, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. This is the first commandment. And, and the second, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. So the scribe said to him, well said, teacher, you, you have spoken the truth. For there is one God and there is no other but he and he loved and to love him with all the heart, all understanding, all the soul, all the strength, to love one's neighbor as oneself is more than all the whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. And now, when Jesus saw that he, he answered wisely, he, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. The way out of these barriers the way to, to, to cross all these barriers is to understand what God wants from me and how God wants me to live. And it is only one way. It is, it is, it is either light or darkness. There is no two ways. When even the smallest candle lights up a dark room, darkness flees and there's only light and our problem is that we always want to to reconcile light with darkness our ways and his ways my interest and his interests my preferences and his preferences and it doesn't work and that's why we are weak we are poor in the spirit that's why we are sick spiritually, psychologically, socially, on, on all levels 
we are suffering because there are many lords, there, there are many bosses, and the most important one is me. And I just numb myself by coming to church and just say, I believe in God, but there is no confession of, 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 of our faith. There is no boldness in our faith at work, at home, on all levels. So these, these are the main three barriers, and I hope in the near future we can talk more about them. But it is either light or darkness. I can't live in two worlds. If we just come out today with this message that whatever barriers I may have or I may think I have, I'll put it under the feet of the Lord and I seek guidance, I seek His grace, I seek His presence in my life with humility, with humility. Maybe we can start a true path of light to Him all glory forever. Amen.